result of our exploration of the universe, we have come to know that there are over 100 billion planets that look like Earth, and that 10 of those are likely to have the characteristics of planet Earth. In context, what these numbers tell you is that the probabilities of us finding another planet like Earth are about 1 in 1 billion. In comparison, this is like winning the national lottery five times in a row. There are two important implications of this number. One is that life is truly a unique characteristic of planet Earth. Secondly, that we can just not afford to tamper with the functioning of this planet. If something goes wrong, we simply don't have anywhere else to go. In contrast to the loneliness of the universe, planet Earth is home to a large number of species. It is simply mind-blowing the number of species that we share this planet with, over 8.7 million of them. Species are unique not only because they are the result of millions of years of evolution, but also because they deliver important goods and services to mankind. Basic things like water, food and oxygen, all of those things come directly or indirectly from many of these species. Unfortunately, we are losing a great number of species in recent times. The rates at which we are losing species is analogous to rates that we have seen in prior mass extinction events. And you and I are responsible for this loss of a species. What I would like to do now is to show you some of my environmental impact on this planet. Let's consider things that we use and do every day. Let's start this day with breakfast and cereal. For us to produce this cereal, we need corn. One of the things that is happening here is that for us to produce this corn will require the transformation of land that initially was covered by forest to area that is now covered by agriculture. This is leading to habitat loss. Basically, is the transformation of habitats that can support species to habitats that don't support them anymore. In this specific example, the use of corn can have environmental impact in countries like China, Brazil, and the United States. Agriculture has an additional environmental impact because for us to produce these crops we require an incredible amount of fertilizers and pesticides that also add to climate change. Additionally, the ramp off into local ecosystems can have a significant impact as well. Let's move on with our day and have a shower. Here we are very likely to use a, a large variety of products that whose main ingredient is palm oil. The production of palm oil is leading again to habitat loss as I just mentioned before, but also by having access to areas in which species were protected before, we are also exploiting those species that were found on those local ecosystems. As a result of my use of palm oil, my environmental impact can be seen in countries like Angola, Malaysia, Indonesia, and even my own country, Colombia. Those are the main producers of palm oil in the world. We are about ready to go now to work and we are very likely going to use a car that requires gasoline. This gasoline, the combustion of this gasoline is adding to greenhouse gases that are increasing the temperature of our planet. These fuels can come from countries like Saudi Arabia, the United States or Canada or as far as Venezuela. Potentially, we could afford an electrical car, however, one of the main parts of these cars are batteries and these batteries require lithium. Lithium is underground, so for us to have access to this element of the air, we have to remove the upper layer of the soil and basically all of those habitats are lost. In this specific case, the use of lithium can have an environmental impact on countries like China, Argentina, and Bolivia, which are the main producers of lithium in the world. Let's move on with our day and have lunch. And what I would like to exemplify here is the use of fish. Most of the fish that we see on our plates every day can come from countries in the Atlantic, the Indian and Pacific Ocean. Let's go home now and let's watch on TV. For us to produce that TV, we require the use of rare minerals. These rare minerals are also found underground, so the same process that I defined before as the mining of uh, these minerals is also leading to the loss of the upper layer of the soil. There is also an additional impact of the use of TV. Producers of TVs are found in Mexico, Japan, and China. However, the rare elements 
are found in Australia, so those rare elements had to be transported to Mexico, to Japan, and the rare producer is China, and again, these, these rare elements had to be shipped to the places where the TVs are being produced. Once the TVs are done, they had to be transported to my place, and that means that these products, these TVs had to be transported from Japan, Mexico, or China to the place where I live. As you can see, at the time that I turn on my TV, there has been an incredible amount of products that have been transported all over the world. This shipping of these products is allowing a, a species to move from place to place, and once these species arrive to these locations, they have an incredible environmental impact on local ecosystems because they rarely have a competitors that can control their populations. Now, as you can see, by the end of a single day of my life, I had an environmental impact on most of the continents of this planet. There, you saw how daily the activities add to the environmental impact that is causing the loss of biodiversity. Now, let me give you a sense of the magnitude of this problem that we have in our hands. The premise is pretty simple. If you were to take my average environmental impact and multiply by the 7 billion people that live in this planet, what you ended up having is a huge problem. Some of the statistics that illustrate the magnitude of this problem are presented here. Today, 100% of the world's oceans are affected by some type of human activity, 83% of the world's land as well. We're losing 6 million hectares of forest through deforestation every year. Mangroves, we lost 3 million hectares from 1980 to 2000. Seagrasses, large predators, wild populations, corals, amphibians, vertebrates. Those are just few of the examples of the different ecosystems that are losing species as a result of, the, of our different environmental impacts. Unfortunately, some species are already paid the ultimate consequences of these environmental impacts, which is extinction. And here, you can see some species that have gone extinct in very recent times. And just like that, there are over 27,000 species lost every year just as a result of deforestation. Now imagine the species that might be, that might be gone extinct as a result of overexploitation, invasive species, and climate change. Now, the challenge, how do we fix this problem? We had already identified how society fixes this problem. See, one of the things that happens initially is that scientists identify the problem and they do a lot of research. All of this information then is passed to the, the public. In response to the concerns of the public, politicians will add and they will generate policies that will generate a solution. Today we are faced with an incredible challenge because unfortunately this knowledge that the scientists are producing is not being passed on to the public. As a result, the public is not aware of the environmental, the environmental problems that we are facing today and of course the, the following uh, change of actions and reactions on the solution of this problem are just not happening. Now, how do we break this bottleneck? We believe that for us to solve these problems, we have to first get these scientists to engage in the communication of, a sci of scientific knowledge to the general public. The ongoing loss of biodiversity combined with the increasing expansion of our population throughout most of the surface of the planet suggests that we cannot afford much delay before choosing the right solution to this problem of biodiversity loss.